Hey, we're here at Rockin' Pod 2023 in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we're the What's Hot in the Strip Clubs podcast on Pantheon Podcast Network. We have got Matt Dice with us, and you might know that name, Hello. CKY, and uh, all that remains. So we've got you with us. How you doing? Good. Happy to be here. How you doing? Good, good. I'm Danny Myers. That's Alon Fong, and it's, it's a pleasure to have you with us. You want to start? Uh, you know, first of all, you're a bass player by trade, right? Yes. Okay, so what I love about you is you play in a variety of projects. I understand you also do some country band stuff, right? I do. Yeah, I was... Um up until recently, I, I just stopped, and they, they got someone else to do it. But I was playing with uh, Thompson Square yeah. oh, awesome. of the Are You Gonna Kiss Me or Not yeah. Yeah. Uh, fame for a little while. Uh, another country group called 641 I played with, uh, Ella Langley, uh, another great up-and-coming artist. She just had her Opry debut two weeks ago. Wow. Uh, going out with Luke Combs later this year. But, Huge. yeah, I, ever since moving here, I just was like, well, if I'm going to move to Nashville... Even though I have my main gig and all that remains now, I, I want to expand. You know, I yeah. want to be able to have a career post metal someday. So, uh, learning those variety of styles and playing out has been a lot of fun. So let's back up. So where are you from originally? And in, in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Okay. Oh, all yeah. right. So up that way. So uh, yeah. you started playing guitar, bass. Uh, yeah, uh, guitar up until I don't know, maybe thirteen to eighteen. Then all of a sudden. It, it went from like, you know, all the kids in your in your town who also played guitar started getting better than me, and I was like, oh, <laughs> well, shit, I'm gonna need to, uh, I'm gonna learn how to play guitar better. So I switched over to bass, and just fell in love with it. I was like, oh, this makes much more sense. Even though I'm a short guy, I got big hands. I was like, oh, you hear that, ladies? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Hey. <laughs> you know what they say. Yeah, that's, um, right. that's right. But no, it it uh, was an easy transition for me. Yeah, so, you know, Boston has such a great rock heritage from yeah. Aerosmith to Boston to Extreme yeah. to uh, Godfather. Godsmack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, as you've evolved and, and, you know, already CKY was sort of a more alternative rock yeah. metal thing, and then you have metalcore with all the remains, which yeah. is heavier. How have you adapted your playing for the different styles? And, and it's, I mean, it all kind of comes from the same aggression of rock in general, mm -hmm. whether it's metal or alt metal or, you know, even radio rock or country. When the song calls for it, you, you go to that extra gear and you just play a little more aggressive. Um, so I've found that having that extra gear of being able to play fast, play loud, pay, play heavy, it's good to know, like, I, I have that in the tank, mm -hmm. and I can always pull it back for whatever projects I have. You play the pocket, like yeah. I'm sure you do in country, right? Exactly. It's, it's exactly. usually simpler. I would assume the bass lines are... Uh, yeah, well, you, you just have to be more mindful of the rhythm, because if you fall apart, the whole song falls apart. Oh, so, okay, good point. Yeah. I love the story that you just told about how you started off as a guitarist and then went to a bass player because yeah. that's the same exact story I've got. <laughs> I started off with, you know, just, yeah. I'm, and I never made it. I, I say I'm, I owned musical instruments. I never say I was a bassist. <laughs> but I had a guitar. I had a keyboard. But the problem was is all the bands in my town had guitarists and keyboards oh, yeah. and everybody needed a bass. So yeah. I ended up buying a bass. I had a Rickenbacker 4001 stereo Ooh. bass that was sweet. <laughs> nice. What and, color? Uh, cherry. Ooh, cherry red. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, I never told you that either. No. So yeah. yeah, so that was how I became a bassist, and that's what's so funny that you would say that. Yeah. And, but I was, you know, I watch you, and like you're one of the the pick guys. You like to use a pick. Yeah, yeah. And I was the only reason I used the pick was because I couldn't really get the finger part out. Yeah, but, yeah. And I'm noticing that most people are not using a pick. Well, do you do you use a pick at all times, or do you sometimes go to a, a softer finger feel? Well, only with all that remains, actually. So uh, ah. with with CKY, primarily fingers. Uh, all the country stuff, primarily fingers. But all that remains now, it's so fast I can't play it with the fingers. <laughs> Maybe yeah. when I was when I was a little Billy younger. Style, right? right, right. Yeah, it it's really just a lot of subdividing. Um, so it's a lot cleaner if you play it with the pick now cuz uh -huh. those it those is. double bass drums going right. all the time it, it would get lost. It'd be it's, too muddy. It's sharper too, right? Yeah. I, that's the yeah. one thing I could never figure out. It always sounded muddy to me. Yeah. You know, with the with the pick you got the treble, you got a little more thump, but of course that Rickenbacker was nice too. Yeah, so. yeah. Those are great basses. I reg one of my biggest bass regrets is selling my Rick. So. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah are you one. a high bass player? Or you no. Are a punk low. I'm I'm, I'm punk low. low. Punk low. Punk low. Legs yeah. spread right. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Again, I'm not that tall, so <laughs> look look pretty funny doing it. But yeah, the the guys who wear it way up here, where it looks like they have a little necklace, like it just doesn't look that cool. Plus, I, you know, 
I like to eat. I don't want to show my stomach off that much. <laughs> now we know the truth. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, I'm a vain motherfucker. So he doesn't do the cocaine, so he's not the, doesn't have the cocaine body. Right. Right. right yeah, right. I don't do drugs or drink anymore, so I, I you know, See, there you go. hide the tummy. I yeah. like it. So what, who would, I, 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 most of us start off as musicians, as music fans. Yeah, right? big time. So who would be your dream band to play with if you could play with anybody? Oh, shit. It, 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 kind of a loaded question. Um, you brought him up. Growing up in Massachusetts, Extreme was a huge. Dude, I, have you heard the new song? No, no, but everyone keeps telling me I have oh to. Oh yeah. my god, Nuno yeah. blows on Rise. For, Gary's vocals are phenomenal. No shit. The, the production is much more upfront, and he's singing. They've had 15 years between records. Yeah. So uh, he's changed his melodic habits. So yeah. That makes sense. So yeah. totally, he sounds different. It sounds great. And Nuno and Pat are. Oh my god. Pat Badger is one of my favorite bass a players. A beast. I have yeah. so many bootlegs from them back in the day because I was a huge extreme fan. Yeah, yeah. And But Nuno's playing on this record. Everyone's talking about the solo on Rise. Yeah. I was lucky enough to hear some of the other tracks. The whole album is it's their best work probably since pornography. Oh, shit. That's good for them, too. Yeah. And what a life Nuno's putting together. Oh, my. Rihanna. Yeah. He's got a production company now. Yeah. Gosh. Good for them. Yeah. But yeah, no. Ex- if I had to like pick a band, insert myself, it'd be someone like Extreme. Okay. You know, just the best of the best. You get them yeah. together. Everyone's playing on 10. Yeah. Th- those guys don't take any days off. And I-, I appreciate that. I like musicians who are on top of their craft all the time and uh, don't fuck around. And Extreme's one of them. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Uh, what about expanding into something like playing with Rihanna's band, for example? So, uh, yeah. I mean, I would I would love that. When, when I first moved to town, one of the artists I started playing with was this girl, Tristan McIntosh. Oh, yeah. Uh, she she was like final four on American Idol. Oh, that's right for the name. A okay. few maybe okay. maybe like five five or six years ago. Okay. Well, she was only fifteen on that season. Crazy. And right now she's fronting a Linda Ronstadt approved tribute act. Wow. As Linda Ronstadt. Holy shit. You know, quote unquote. She's a powerhouse vocalist. Yeah, she is. But not rock, not metal, nothing. It, it, we're playing like soul music. That's awesome. And I had a friend who was playing drums for it. And he's like, it's not near wheelhouse, but you just moved to town. We are looking for a bass player. Nice. And I was like, you know what? I Let me brush up. Let me take on the challenge. You know, yeah. Listen to a lot of music like that. Learn how to play those styles. Um, and I was really happy to do that when I yeah. moved here. And I was like, this is going to be good for my uh, overall toolkit. I think so, that's it's so yeah. awesome. You know, they say uh, life begins outside your comfort zone. It does. Right? And that's how yeah. you grow and learn. Like, even podcasting for us has been a pivot, right? Uh-huh. From the strip club DJ booth to doing podcasts. <laughs> and he's still in the booth as well, but I haven't been. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, I'm meeting so many people and learning so much great stuff. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, do you do a lot of songwriting as well? Or? Uh, yeah, here and there. So, right now, all that remains is currently writing their new album. Okay. Um, and it, it's in its early stages, but I'm hoping to have... Uh, quite a bit of input with that. Awesome. Uh, writing takes place back in Massachusetts, where okay. we're from. So, you know, living down here, it's kind of doing stuff remote until we get together. Sure. Um, you know, our guitar player lives in Los Angeles. <laughs> the rest of the band lives in Massachusetts. So it's a lot of Zoom calls. Um, yeah. But I do work with uh, AEW, the wrestling company. Oh, yeah. Company. Love, love AEW. Yeah. So uh, Mikey Ruckus is his name. He's the music director. Okay. Of uh, during during COVID, he was like given the opportunity to put out a solo record under AEW's record label. Awesome. So he reached out to me, like we were like mutual fans of each other, and he was like, hey, I need a hook written on on one of my tracks, and I was like, I can write the hook for you, and I know the perfect girl. I got Tristan to sing on it. Um, And we sent it to him, and he's like, absolutely. So we just started working together during COVID more often. Um, and just a couple nights ago, we recorded the vocal hook for um, uh, Soraya, who used yeah, to be yeah, Paige, yeah, 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 yeah. In, uh, her new faction, The Outcast, where yep. we did their the theme. theme. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to mm-hmm. they, they, yeah, last Wednesday, they came out to the arena. It blasted over the air. It was We recorded it the night before. It was on TBS the next night. That's wow. so cool. It was, it was See, really This is cool. what I love hearing about, yeah. is people doing different things. And like it's not just, of course, you have the big brand name all that remains, yeah, you know? Yeah. But of course, people are doing so much more nowadays. That's just one of the cool things because of COVID and just streaming and the internet. Yeah. During downtime, people can do so much more and expand. So I think that's fascinating that you're doing that. Thank Any you. other business brand ventures, clothing lines? Uh, <laughs> See, that, that's where that's where I fall off. I'm a uh, shitty businessman. I, I, don't, I don't really know. I'd rather go hang out in the strip clubs. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Come on in, man. You that's know, fine. I've been in the strip club business my, pretty much, you know, since like 95. And I can always yeah. remember going into work one day 
this is back when we learned about music from the entertainers. Yeah. You know, when they like, it, uh, especially the rock stuff. And I remember this entertainer, her name was Tommy, and she said, you got to hear this song. <laughs> KY, baby. And that's when I said CKY, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. was the first song by you that I had ever heard. Yeah. And that, that yeah. one still gets played regularly yeah. in the strip clubs. No, that 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 album, Infiltrate, Destroy, Rebuild, it, it has such a great blend of like weird spooky synth and like it's it's kind of got that sexy bedroom vibe yeah. to it, yeah. even yeah. though it yeah. is a metal record or a rock album. But yeah, no, it, you're not the first to tell me that. Flesh into gear. I've I've heard people strip to that yep. song, Escape from Hellview. So mm -hmm. no, that's that's good to know. I mean, hey, I'd rather have that happening than be, you know, like the official song for you know <laughs> well, people who aren't hot and naked. Yeah. So have you ever been in a strip Phil, club? Levitra, right? <laughs> have you ever been in a strip club and one of your songs came on? Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not embarrassed to admit. <laughs> back back in maybe the early 2000s sure. and stuff when. You know, like when we were riding them pretty high, and we would go to certain strip clubs, and like the DJs knew we would go in after a right. show. Like they they would start putting on some of the songs yeah. to you know either the joy or detriment to the strippers. Right, right, yeah. So. yeah. Something like why are you playing this during the show? Right, yeah, yeah. Up. yeah. What Listen, happened so, to Genuine? Put him back. Right. On. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? One of the great things about this so. A misconception about our show. A lot of artists get in trouble with their wives and girlfriends oh. coming on the show. Or won't come on. And I'm like, listen, our tagline, it's about the music. Literally, yeah. we're trying to get your music into the clubs. It's just yeah. more branding and whatever. And I tell people all the time, listen, tell your wife or girlfriend, you're not talking to females. You're talking to 50-year-old-plus <laughs> men. We don't even talk about the girls that often unless uh, it's a story like we just shared. Yeah, yeah. And it's about the music. Literally, we're music fans. So mm -hmm. for all the listeners out there, yeah. if your husband or boyfriend's in a band, don't stress. We're not going to hook them up with a bunch of girls yeah. and have them doing lap dances for them on our show. Or I'll, I'll give you free relationship advice. If they're in a band, <laughs> just leave. Like, find somebody else. <laughs> Same as a DJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah we're not the yeah, best You're probably sick of, uh, sick of uh, supporting them financially. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's true, too. That's true, too. You know, I was giving uh, one of my entertainers a ride home one day yeah. uh, a few years ago. And uh, I didn't know if I was going to get any or not. You know, she invites me and we're sitting on the couch. And she's a big country fan. The reason I'm telling yeah. you the story is the song uh, from Thompson Square came on. Are you going to kiss me or not? <laughs> and all of a sudden she starts singing, are you going to kiss me or not? And yeah. I said, that song is what broke the ice. Yeah. And I had a good night. There, well, there we you go. go. So that song, yeah, never got me back for a second one. But, oh. you know, I mean. But yeah, so that was what I thought. Uh, you know, the Thompson Square. I want to do that, but uh, like <laughs> playing bass. Now I can see yeah. that like there's a little bit of uh, yeah. the same between CKY um, and all that remains. But what yeah. about playing country? I mean, it, was that something you had to really put a lot of effort in, or did it come natural to you? It didn't at first. Like I, I'm so used to when when you're on stage with all the remains. It's almost like a all right, just put on your seatbelt because that song yeah. is coming in 230, 240 beats per minute. And it's like, one, two, three, four. And okay, we're here. Yeah. You, you can't breathe. But with country, it's like, you got to pick your spots. You, yeah. gotta, you know, you're, you're establishing a story. Yeah. Like those mm -hmm. fans are hanging on your every word. So you, you really have to Use think. space. Yeah, that space is really important. So I had to learn how to calm down a bit, which was, you know, new for me. Yeah, so, well, yeah. the metalcore stuff, I mean, the bass lines, I mean, you're busy. Your fingers got to get tired. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're stamping up, for ladies, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, the stamping up your fingers, to do, if you're doing a headline set, which is usually 90 minutes yeah. minimum. It's no joke. I yeah. mean, I, like, I hate I hate to ever get into, like, age or anything like that, but, because uh, I've, I've been the young guy in every band. I joined All That Remains originally when I was 18. Oh, wow. I joined CKY at 21. That's crazy. And then I rejoined All That Remains okay. at 38. Okay. So I, I'm a totally different You're person. You're much older than you look. Well, yeah. You come well, right. So saw that you, clean living I did. So with the extreme yeah. stuff, I was like, I was kind of surprised. I'm like, yeah. wow, all right. Well, uh, yeah. But I grew up with older sisters who okay. got me into hair metal and everything. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and living in Massachusetts, you can't, you can't get away from extreme. That's but fair. Yeah, it, it's like I'm 39 now. Okay. And it's like, how much longer can I keep playing like, this music? It's so fast. But there, there are people 20 years older than me pl still playing metal, and it's like, well, you got to figure it out. You, get, you just really have to stay on top of it, practice more, 
stop drinking, <laughs> get some sleep, eat a vegetable once in a while. Are you are you going to happen to be on the Sonic Temple Festival? No, Bill, not okay. this year. Not okay. this year. There was an offer, but uh, we're we're taking this year to just write. Okay, very yeah. cool. Bummer because yeah. we'll be there. So you know, Damn. probably it, be backstage. It's a good lineup. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah big time, <laughs> big time. Damn. Well, very cool, man. Well, I know uh, I would talk to you all day, but I know you got to get to your next man. interview. But oh, do you have your? Where's your handle? Are uh, they going to be on it? <laughs> ah, there you go. Now, um, website. Uh, for are you or would you more like to promote the Alder Remains website? Well, you can find socials. me on socials. I'm just at Matt Dice, and Dice is spelled D E I S because I never got around to changing it to. Is it D E I S? D E I S. Yeah. Uh, we'll follow. We'll tag you when the yeah. shows actually drop. Yeah, at Matt Dice, uh, and then A T R H Q on Twitter, okay. and at All That Remains on Instagram. Uh, we got a lot of stuff coming up. We get you know new album coming. Uh, going to be the first one with Jason Richardson, the world's greatest guitar player on guitar, filling in ever wow. since Ollie passed away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, yeah, good stuff coming up. I really can't wait to share it with everyone. Yeah, we there can't you. wait to hear it. Thank we'll you. have you on our other podcast as well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is that Matt, related to strippers as well? About new music New show. music okay. podcast. Yeah, off the charts. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. We could talk strippers on both. <laughs> there you go. Matt, you thank go. you so, so thank much. Thank you, brother. So happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you, guys.